This video is on attention and depersonalization. It's on our natural attentional strategies and it's also about how you can increase your attention, your short-term attention, your awareness to decrease feelings of depersonalization disorder. So see the article below. I talk about two techniques that you can implement daily. One is reading. Okay. Sustained single tasking on reading. The other is mindfulness meditation. But this video is going to be about a lot of things. I'm also going to be talking about our inherent attentional strategies as people with depersonalization. We tend to daydream a lot more than most people. We tend to have quote-unquote attention deficits. I don't see ADD in this case as necessarily a disorder. I just see it as a different attentional strategy, a different temperamental style that actually has a lot of value. There's a lot of value in having a quote-unquote distracted mind. Okay, there's, there's actually adaptive value in this style of thinking, in this attentional style. I've been reading a book um, called Focus by Daniel Goleman. He also wrote Emotional Intelligence and Social Intelligence. I just want to read from it because there's a chapter called The Value of a Mind Adrift. And it really captures and expresses the value in people that have quote-unquote ADD, the people, the value in people that have this capacity to daydream and to have their mind flicker from source to source to topic to topic. And actually not being in the present moment, but having the ability to daydream, which is actually cutting yourself off from the in-the-moment senses. That ability, that capacity, is one of the characteristic features of being human. It's one of the things that separates us from animals is actually to not be quote-unquote in the moment with our senses but to be in the moment with our thoughts and with our mental world. So I'll just read a little bit from this chapter, The Value of a Mind Drift. While mind wandering may hurt our immediate focus on some task at hand, some portion of the time it operates in the service of solving problems that matter for our lives. In addition, a mind adrift lets our creative juices flow. While our minds wander, we become better at anything that depends on a flash of insight, from coming up with imaginative wordplay to inventions and original thinking. In fact, people who are extremely adept at mental tasks that demand cognitive control and a roaring working memory, like solving complex math problems, can struggle with creative insights if they have trouble switching off their fully concentrated focus. Among other positive functions of mind wandering are generating scenarios for the future, self-reflection, navigating a complex social world, incubation of creative ideas, flexibility in focus, pondering what we're learning, organizing our memories, just mulling life, and giving our circuitry for more intensive focusing a refreshing break. A moment's reflection leads me to add two more, reminding me of things I have to do so they don't get lost in the mind shuffle and entertaining me. I'm sure you can suggest some other useful features if you let your mind drift a while. So, Daydreaming helps us become more creative, and a lot of people with ADD are very creative. It is a creative mental capacity, and like he says here, people that can really focus on the present moment oftentimes have difficulty in being creative, being creative of letting go, of allowing the kind of subconscious mind to pop ideas up and allowing us to catch them, because a lot of times ideas pop up out of your subconscious mind, out of nowhere. And when you just allow yourself to be creative, that is taking this capacity to have this, this mind adrift and channeling it into a valuable outlet. So being creative and creating things is really important. 
And it's something that people with depersonalization, I think, have the tendency to excel as being creative. Life's creative challenges rarely come in the form of well-formulated puzzles. Instead, we often have to recognize the very need to find a creative solution in the first place. Daydreaming incubates creative discovery. A classic model of the stages of creativity roughly translates to three modes of focus. Orienting, where we search out and immerse ourselves in all kinds of inputs. Selective attention on the specific creative challenge and open awareness, where we associate freely to let the solution emerge, then home in on the solution. The brain systems involved in mind wandering have been found active just before people hit upon a creative insight, and intriguingly are unusually active in those with attention deficit disorder, or ADD. Adults with ADD relative to those without also show higher levels of original creative thinking and more actual creative achievements. Okay, adults with ADD relative to those without show higher levels of original creative thinking and more actual creative achievements. The entrepreneur Richard Branson, founder of the corporate empire built on Virgin Air and other companies, has offered himself as a poster boy for success with ADD. Okay, attention deficit Attention deficit disorder lends itself to being creative. Coming up with new ideas. You know, just being able to sit down and focus on something like a monkey, like, like we're taught in school, to sit there still and to read whatever they say and to listen to whatever they say isn't necessarily the best attentional strategy. Because what if you're supposed to attend to is actually boring, not relevant, and not useful? Should you pay attention to it? Should you actually pay attention to it? What if this person with ADD, and people with ADD focus great when it comes to the right things, when it comes to things they're actually interested in. Their focus might shift from this interest to that interest to this interest to that interest. And guess what happens? You might actually come up with a creative fucking thought. You know? So it's an intentional strategy. But... There are, there are problems when we get lost in daydreaming. Daydreaming can become pathological. It can stop us from kind of living up to our full potential. So in the article below, I talk about using mindfulness meditation and single-tasking sustained reading as two things that can get you to engage your here and now attention because reading is something that sustained reading is something that really integrates our brain. You have to use a lot of different brain regions to read something for a sustained period of time. First of all, you have to not focus on all the other stimuli in your environment and in your body that could be distracting you and focus on what you're attending to. That's very good for our brains. And people with depersonalization oftentimes have deficits in, in you know, working memory and are very distracted. So it's, it's good to practice that to gain cognitive balance. We want cognitive balance is what we want, but we don't want to crush this attentional strategy we have, this creative impulse that's inside of us. And uh, there's another little part of this chapter I kind of want to read. Um, let's see, where are we? The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says almost 10% of children have the disorder of ADD in a form mixed with hyperactivity. In adults, the hyperactivity fades, leaving ADD. Around 4% of adults seem to have the problem. When challenged by a creative task, for example, finding novel uses for a brick, those with ADD do better despite their zoning out or perhaps because of it. We all might learn something here. In an experiment where volunteers were challenged with the novel uses task. Those whose minds had been wandering compared with those whose attention had been fully concentrated came up with 40% more original answers. And when people who had creative accomplishments like a novel, patent, or art show to their credit were tested for screening out irrelevant information to focus on a task, their minds wandered more frequently than did others. So they tested people that were actually, that did something creative, like make a novel, get a, get a patent for an idea, or, you know, painted or whatever, and their minds wandered when they gave them a test to focus on something. 
So obviously there's a correlation between this quote-unquote attention deficit and being creative. Okay, their minds wander more frequently than did others, indicating an open awareness that may have served them well in their creative work. In our less frenetic creative moments, just before an insight, the brain typically rests in a relaxed, open focus marked by an alpha rhythm. This signals a state of daydreamy reverie. Since the brain stores different kinds of information in wide-reaching circuitry, a freely roaming awareness ups the odds of serendipitous associations and novel combinations. Rappers immersed in freestyling where they improvise lyrics in the moment show heightened activity in the mind-wandering circuitry among other parts of the brain, allowing fresh connections between far-ranging neural networks. In this spacious mental ecology, we are more likely to have novel associations, the aha sense that marks a creative insight or a good rhyme. In a complex world where almost everyone has access to the same information, new value arises from the original synthesis, from putting ideas together in novel ways, and from smart questions that open up untapped potential. Creative insights entail joining elements in a useful, fresh way, taking elements from here and there and mixing them into a useful composite. Imagine for a moment biting into a crisp apple. The patina of colors on its skin, the sounds of the crunch as you bite into it, the wash of taste, smells, and textures. Take a moment to experience that virtual apple. As that imagined moment came to life in your mind, your brain almost certainly generated a gamma spike. Such gamma spikes are familiar to cognitive neuroscientists. They occur routinely during mental operations like the virtual apple bite and just before creative insights. It would be making too much of this to see gamma waves as some secret of creativity, but the sight of the gamma spike during a creative insight seems telling. An area associated with dreams, metaphors, the logic of art, myth, and poetry. These operate in the language of the unconscious, a realm where anything is possible. Fred's method of Freud's method, sorry, Freud's method, free association, where you speak whatever comes into your mind without censoring, opens one door to this open awareness mode. Our mind holds endless ideas, memories, and potential associations waiting to be made. But the likelihood of the right idea connecting with the right memory within the right context and all that coming into the spotlight of attention diminishes drastically when we are either hyper-focused or too gripped by an overload of distractions to notice the insight. Then there's what's stored in other people's brains. And he goes on to talk about that. But, you know... This ability to zone out, to actually daydream, and the whole temperament and the whole cognitive style that people with depersonalization tend to exhibit is correlated with creativity. Okay. So, in using the attention strategies that I talk about below in the article, those are to help you gain cognitive balance. You don't want to be so caught in your head that you can never come down into the world. And by engaging in, say, mindfulness meditation, where you are essentially getting grounded in your external world and grounded in your own interoception or sensations of your body, you are getting grounded. Okay, You're reconnecting your mind with your body, and that helps. People with depersonalization need that. Okay, And sustained reading, flexing your attentional capacity helps integrate the functioning of your brain. So those two techniques are really important. But I also want to emphasize just in this video the power of harnessing your own daydream, your own ability to absorb in your mental world. There's, that, there's actually a name for a mental world we create, a paracosm. You know, and anyone who writes a great novel, great story, they have a mental world that they've developed through absorption, through daydreaming, through synthesis, and through creative, non-linear thinking. That's important. Extremely important. And it's becoming more important in our society as we're automating and outsourcing things that robots can do. We need people to create. The creative capacity is becoming even more and more valuable in our society. So, that is the video on attention. This topic's big. You could go on and on about it, but don't label yourself if you have trouble paying attention to things. 
don't don't label yourself as having necessarily a disorder. You know, it's a, it's a different attentional strategy, and it's very valuable. So thanks for watching. Take care.